Hey everybody, me and Dean back at you with another video. Today we are doing episode number 10 of BC vs. The World, and I got a couple of big cabs off to take out for a test drive here. Uh, this is uh, Big Boy vs. Big Boy. How does one of BC's best cab solves, can it possibly stand up to a classic from Napa Valley? Let's find out. You'll see over here, this is both from 2013. This is Joseph Phelps, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Napa Valley. It is uh, about a hundred bucks uh, from the winery, I think, against uh, La Stella. 2013 La Sofia, which is 100% Cab Sauv. Um, almost positive, yep. Um, and this is as good a Cab Sauv in BC you could get, I think. If it's not the best, it's in the top two or three. So, and uh, yeah, it's both 2013, so they're nicely aged. Of course, they could age longer, but hey, gotta drink them sometime, right? Uh, so here we are. So this is the Joseph Phelps. And this is the La Sofia. I've been, they were poured, I don't know, 20 minutes or so ago. I didn't air rate either one of them. This was actually, actually Corvan because I'm not sure I'm going to have two bottles tonight. Depends on how the wife's feeling when she wakes up from her nap. Um, but we're going to, I poured the Phelps in here and decanted it, but I didn't aerate it. So, to give it a fair comparison. Alright, so. Oh. You know what that smells like? An Napa Cab. It's very classic. I'm starting to get some tertiary characteristics already. Even at eight years of age, I can smell. Like it's got your black fruit. It's got your cedar, your your pencil shavings, uh, black plum, eucalyptus. Uh, it's definitely oaked. Not as like this isn't one of the crazy uh, over oaked. I shouldn't say over oaked. One of the heavily heavy heavily oaked ones like maybe silver oak or or even camas. But there's definitely some oak there. The pencil shape because the graphite is actually quite um, pronounced here. That's nice. You can see there. I don't know if you can see the color, but it's it's got a deep purple color. It really gets red, um, really almost orangey to the at the meniscus there, which would show you it's probably seven or eight years old. Of course, I'm not trying to guess how old it is. I know how old it is. Mm, okay, so that is lovely. I see the difference with the color. Um, they're both very purple, but the Phelps, um, well, you know, in the same light, the Phelps is a little more orange around the meniscus, but other than that, they're pretty similar. Interesting. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Ooh. Those tannins are still rip your face off. Wow, that's a nice wine. Um, and Phelps doesn't go wrong very often, do they? Palette really confirms the nose. Blackberry, black plum, little blueberry. Uh, cassis, cedar, a sweet tobacco leaf, um, graphite, again, very classic, definitely a little bit of um, baking spice, mm. lovely, 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 okay, as you would expect. Now, most people would say that BC doesn't have much of a chance to be a, a big Napa cab, but if any cab saw is going to do it, I'm not sure. I have to go back and look. I'm not sure if I've done a cab saw versus cab saw battle. I know there's been some cab saw based blends, but I can't remember if I actually took a cab saw out, out yet. You wouldn't think, right? I mean, BC, Napa Valley's known for Cabernet Sauvignon, and BC's not, really. Mmm. The medium, medium plus intensity of aroma, that one's more intense on the nose for sure. More, maybe more like medium. I'm trying to coax something out of it here. Uh, so, very uh, black fruit, blackberry, and like some red cherry, really. Definitely softer than the, than the Phelps. A little bit of eucalyptus. Uh, so not nearly as uh, expressive on the nose as the Phelps. Let's see how the palate is. Um, 
um, black fruit, red cherry. Graphite. Bit of dried thyme. Hmm. And they're still big. A little bit of like a, almost a charred meat coming up at the end there. Medium plus finish. Mm, okay, both good ones. But I think there's an obvious winner here. Yeah, okay. So, uh, the United States wins this one by a comfortable margin, I think. Very good wine. Um, but, really kind of pales in comparison to the Napa, Napa Cab. I actually, I believe I've, I've, you know, I like this. Not, don't get me wrong, but I think I've liked this uh, other vintages better in the past. Um, maybe it just needs to open more. Maybe two hours from now, there's a switch, but I don't like it because the Phelps is going to be better in two hours, too. Mm, yeah, so. So, this has opened up a little bit just in a few seconds. A lot more fruit. Like, this is more fruit forward. And this is much, much more complex. Yeah, there's all kinds of things going on in here where this is really a kind of like, it's... It's black fruit, it's, you know, it's red cherry, it's uh, eucalyptus. It's, it's really a classic BC Cab Sog, where this is a classic Napa Cab, and there's probably a reason Napa's known for Cab de Sauvignon. Okay, so uh, we are tied again. It was 5-4 BC. Um, BC had, re had um, rebounded from a 3-1 deficit, had tied it at, at had started taking a 5-4 lead in my last video. Now it's 5-5 again. Uh, maybe I'll make the next one the winner take all. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, um, but I think the one thing I wanted to, to prove with these with these videos, and I would try to be as fair as I can because I don't want to be pro BC. I want it to be neutral. But the one thing I wanted to show is that BC wine can stand up uh, to great wines of the world. Perhaps BC Cab Sauv can't necessarily stand up to Napa Cabs, but I'm sure there are some uh, Napa Cabs that would not. Uh, be able to stand up to this, but this is, but Joseph Phelps, of course, is a, is a beautiful wine, beautiful, a classic Napa Cab. Okay, what's next? As I have teased a couple times, it is time now, this is video number 49, my next video will be number 50, that will be the one where I do my, um, my blind tasting, my six wine blind tasting, the Master Sommelier tasting portion of their exam. Tracy has picked the wines, they're sitting down there, they're in plastic paper bags, I have no idea what they are. She got them at a liquor store I've never been in, so i got no idea what they've got. The only, my only guide will be, I do have a list somewhere around here of what could be taste tested, because I, as I've mentioned a couple of times, it can't just be anything. Uh, or the wife would probably get me three different varietals of, or three different um, uh, wineries making Albarino from Uruguay, and the reds would probably all be from Kazakhstan or something like that, just because she knew, I, you know, just to screw with me, because it would be fun for her to do that. So, um, but the funny thing is, she's not going to have to intentionally make me do lousy. I'm going to do lousy. I'm not very good at blind tasting. It's tough. Even the professionals, the master sommeliers, don't nail them all the time. I'm hoping I'll get one of six. If I hope, like, I really hope I get, I'll nail one of six. That'll make me happy. If I get close on a couple other ones, that's great. And I just hope I don't completely. Well, I probably will completely mess a couple of them. I mean, let's face it, I have no idea. There's lots of wines I've never tasted. The list of, of wines that are testable is fairly long, but also fairly classic. There will be no BC wine. There will be no wine from Kazakhstan or Uruguay. There will be no wine from China um, or England or one of the other countries. It, it does make wine, but maybe it doesn't make it. Uh, we don't get the love here. No wine from Brazil. Uh, so, you know, and hopefully no bizarre varietals that I've never had. 
Uh, I think at this point I've probably, I haven't looked at the list again, but I think I've probably had at least tasted one bottle of everything on that list, I think. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So I can't promise when that's going to be, but it'll be very early in the new year, January 2nd or 3rd probably, when I get around to doing that video. I actually, the one thing I have to do um, is teach the wife how to use the Coravac. So we're not going to open six bottles of wine because uh, that's a little too much for, you know, even for me to drink in one day. Um, so I got to teach her that. Uh, or help her. Maybe if I can, yeah, see, so if I can, if I can, I don't know how many of the bottles that she has are screw caps. But if there's some that are cork, I'm sure it's two or three or four of them will be corks. Uh, as long as they don't have anything on the cork that indicates the winery, which some do, I can cork them myself without seeing the bottle. So we'll see. I'll figure that out, the logistics of it. I'll get a little clock here for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, six wines. Four minutes and 10 seconds each. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to sit down with six wines and a clock and the notes on what can be in that tasting. And that'll be it. And we'll see how I do. So that's it for tonight. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please uh, give it a like and a subscribe if you do. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow the channel a little bit. It would be awesome. And most important right now, I hope you guys all have a wonderful, safe, happy New Year's. Uh, it's a couple days from now. Uh, we're going to have a nice night. And don't drink and drive if you're going to imbibe in a little wine. And I hope you are, because otherwise, what the hell are you doing here? Um, make sure you have a safe ride home, okay? Or... Some of you are probably just uh, drinking at home, which is perfectly, <laughs> even in the middle of a pandemic, perfectly good solution. So, anyway, that's it for tonight. Don't forget, drink great wine. Talk to you soon. Thanks.